Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me on this journey of figuring out how to better reflect God in all aspects of life by looking at things that I wished I had been taught. As we come to a close on this video series, I want to provide you with some ideas and thoughts to ponder that will hopefully help us all learn to better reflect God through our political ideas, whether we claim to stand on the right, the left, or somewhere in between. Now, as we've come to see, the Bible does not speak into this area of our lives the way that we would probably like it to. Much like many of the topics we've already discussed, and many more that we haven't. Neither the Bible as a whole nor Jesus tell us which political system, party, or belief to align with. And frankly, that's because it's not a representation of our modern politics anyway, since there's no democracy present. What we do see is tribalism, theocracy, and imperialism by the Roman Empire. However, what is reaffirmed throughout the Bible and what is shown through Jesus's recorded life and words are how to treat our neighbor and love them well with the love of the Lord. We don't have a political system that makes this work well yet. And I think that should be encouraging to us to strive to bring up a new one that is based on such spiritual principles like compassion, service, humility, justice, and love. But in doing so, I think it's also important to realize that while these spiritual and Christian principles can be motivators, they don't have to be the institution or the system itself. In other words, we shouldn't be trying to convert others to our way of thinking through some sort of force or government. We can't make others change by seeking power in the government over those that we disagree with. Bringing about change in a person's life should be done through love. And even then, it may not be the change that we necessarily expect or prefer. But such is the way of Jesus, as we have seen. He works in ways that we cannot. Now, my view of the Bible may differ from yours, but we all sell the Bible short and quite frankly try to control God when we look at the Bible as a set in stone, ever perfect moral code for all humanity. Instead, I believe it invites us to wrestle with our responsibility as humans and to grow in faith and understanding as we look at what it means to reflect Jesus right here in our present time, even in politics. It should never be about gaining power to support ourselves or our beliefs, but about giving our power and privilege to those the way that Jesus did so that those who are looked down on and those who are outcasts, those that are being done injustice or who may be oppressed or marginalized can begin to rise and have a voice and claim their seat at the table of God. Jesus was in fact murdered for doing this very thing, this very work to dismantle these systems of oppression and exclusion in his time. And Jesus is the first and greatest example of what it means to be a person in a privileged position, since he was a man, in a patriarchal society. But to lend or to give up that privilege to protect and save the lives of those who are underprivileged. This should also encourage us and empower us to do the same radical work of seeking justice, giving privilege, and creating a sort of equity for all by giving others the love they deserve and so very much desire. Nonetheless, we'll probably still all experience debates and struggles because after all, we're dealing with the mysteries of God. And I would not wanna be the one to claim to know God's thoughts exactly and correctly. Instead, I wanna invite all of us to walk with each other side by side with our own convictions, being able to come together in that mystery. And in that mystery, we're on a journey of wisdom together with each other, with God, and with the Bible, which is a collection of testimonies of how people have experienced God. 
And so one question I'd like for you to ponder is if their experiences with God are considered worthy to look back on or to think about or to reflect on, why can't ours be? I also believe the Bible can be a great moral aid on this journey, but when we start to use it as a rule book, we seem to be seeking control instead of using it for wisdom, which is what leads to freedom. The essence of Jesus is that each person is sacred, worthy of respect and dignity. So in order to speak into the life of another, especially by means of politics, we have to respect them. We have to give them dignity. We have to treat them as sacred and worthy, and we have to have a relationship with them. Even so, in that relationship, we need to keep our hearts and our minds open to one another. Now, to wrap this all up, I wanna present you with some practical ways to better express political beliefs that will hopefully be helpful in better reflecting God. One way could be by electing people into offices who exemplify this sense of decency, respect, justice, and temperament towards others and so forth. Those who listen well to others and try to understand their perspectives even if they disagree. And frankly, I think it's something that we all should exemplify. First John chapter 4 verses 20 through 21 says that if anyone says I love God yet hates his brother, he's a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. And this provides wisdom to show that we can't say we love and yet do nothing for those who are poor, hurting, suffering injustice, who are marginalized, and so forth. This also reflects on the idea of Jesus's words to his disciples that whatever you do for the least of these, you also do for me. And so to love and to reflect God's love, we must help end and break barriers that are causing disparities and injustice, whatever that is through economic programs or governmental actions or whatever else may be out there. Our worship and our love of God is intertwined with our relationships with our neighbors. And our relationship with God is meant to be expressed to those around us. And even though there's no clear direction for how to exactly do this in the realm of politics, striving for wisdom, justice, understanding, equity, and love for our neighbors is a great place to start. And so I'm gonna end with a quote that I recently heard from a Buddhist monk that I thought was really awesome. His name is Thich Nhat Hanh. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But he said, you must love in such a way that the person you love feels free. I hope that this was helpful and I hope that we can all move to a place of better reflecting God in the political realm. Thank you again for listening and I hope you have a great day.